If you look at these uh, images here, you can see that changing the ISO of an image is going to change the sensitivity to light overall. So it's going to make your image uh, more sensitive to the light and you're going to get a lot more detail. So this top image here, top left hand frame, I've shot at S ISO 100 f4 at a 1 15th of a second. So you can see, and I'm, I'm also using fill flash camera left. So you can see that overall it's quite dark. If I up my ISO to 400, but I keep my f-stop the same and shutter speed the same, you can see that now I'm getting all the blinking lights in the background, a lot more detail overall, his skin tone looks good. And as I up my ISO, but keep my f-stop the same and shutter speed the same, you're going to see that the image gets brighter and brighter and brighter. The downside of this, using high ISO, is you get more noise or grain in your image. So um, that's the trade-off. So you want to be working with an ISO where if you're shooting in a dark area, and this is uh, night time, okay? So I find that if I'm shooting events, I like to shoot at an ISO of somewhere between ISO 400 and ISO 1250. And cameras have gotten a lot better today at uh, having a lower noise threshold when you're shooting at higher ISO. So you should be pretty comfortable working between ISO 400 to ISO 1600. And then what you want to do is you want to think about before you start shooting, what f-stop you want to shoot at what you want your background to look like. So if you've got a, an area where it's, it's an event, you want to highlight, you want the people in the shot to be the hero of the frame and you don't want uh, a lot of detail in the background because it, it's, it's a lot to look at, all right? So you want to throw your background out of focus. So you want to shoot at around uh, the F4 to F5.6 uh, range is going to give you like a, a nice little bit of bokeh in the background and it's going to make your subject stand out. Okay. Now, does that make sense, guys? Yeah, it does. Okay. Rebecca's got a question. What power is your flash? All right. We'll get, we'll get onto that. I just wanted to establish the, these settings and the thinking between, but behind ISO. So, so that's, that's the, the, the thinking behind the ISO. I just want to show you now what happens with shutter speed. All right. So, um, the shutter speed controls when you're working with flash shutter speed controls the ambient lighting. So that's the amount, because you, when you think about how a shutter opens and I'm making my hands look like, um, say you've got a, a roller blind on your window. Jan has roller blinds on her windows. Uh, the shutter works where it opens up and down and it lets light into the frame. The slower the shutter speed, the slower the blinds go up and down and the more light is let in. So you can see that uh, uh, F8 at an eighth of a second, have a look at how lovely the background is, all right? When I increase my shutter speed, F8 at a 15th of a second, notice how the background gets a bit darker, but the guy's face remains the same. So I've got the same flash power on my model, nothing has changed, and the same uh, aperture setting, but only the ambient light changes. And I've got a better... Uh, slide for that as well. You can see uh, this one here. So f5.6 at 1 200th of a second shooting outside. I'm lighting him from camera right. You can see that the background is dark and moody. If I shoot at f5.6 at 1 2 1 1 25th of a second, can you see how the background becomes a little bit lighter? f5.6 at a 60th of a second, background becomes lighter again, but the person, the lighting on the person doesn't change because only the ambient light is influenced um, by the shutter speed, not the flash power, okay? So you can basically change the look of your background just by changing the shutter speed. So these are the things you want to think of when you're shooting event photography. You want to be working at a shutter speed 
that gets all the detail in the background. So if you're shooting on a, uh, say it's a, uh, a bright sunny day, you want to have a, a faster shutter speed than if you were shooting, say, at night, uh, where's my shutter speed, where you've got lots of uh, chandeliers and bright lights and you want to get all that detail. You don't want to shoot, if you shoot at, say, F8, 1, 200th of a second, have a look at the difference between that and, and F8 at 1, 8th of a second where I've brought in all the detail. Can you see the difference? So yeah. face looks the same, but less detail in the background. So a slower shutter speed is going to bring in more detail in the background. Um, okay. Have a look at this one uh, where you can see. So say you're shooting a party at night or a wedding at night. So in this image on the left, I've uh, set my uh, ISO to 100. I've got F8 at 1 200th of a second. These lights in the background are actually on, but the shutter speed is too fast to pick up any of that warmth. And I've got trees there in the background. There's actually a sunset going on. I've completely killed all the ambient light by shooting at a faster shutter speed. When I slow my shutter speed down, and increase my ISO and open up my f-stop, suddenly I've got more light going on. I've picked up all the detail in the background. I've got the sunset, and uh, but the, the lighting's still the same on their faces. All right, so that just shows you how you can control the light coming into the background. The problem is when you're shooting an event, you don't have time. Uh, even if you're a seasoned professional who's done thousands and thousands and thousands of these, you will keep forgetting to change your ISO. You, you will be um, too flustered to uh, change the shutter speed uh, because you're having to talk to people. So you want to be able to work out a way to take some of the thinking out of the equation. And the solution is to do something called auto ISO. So on most cameras, where your ISO dial is, you're going to have your lowest ISO setting. And then underneath that, there's going to be a, a little red A. And that stands for auto ISO, right? And what auto ISO does is it, it basically um, tells the camera that, okay, I'm going to choose the f-stop that I shoot at. I'm also going to choose the shutter speed that I shoot at. I want you to, you the camera, to choose the ISO based on the shutter speed and the aperture that I'm shooting at, which takes all the guesswork. So when you're on auto ISO, basically what happens is you, dot, you, you pick your f-stop, so you might be shooting at, it, say, f5.6, right? And you choose your f-stop based on how you want your background to look. Do you want a slight blur to your background? Then you want to have a shallower depth of field or a wider aperture. If you want all the detail in the background or you've got large groups where there is um, people in the front, people slightly behind, and you want everyone sharp through the frame, then you might want to cover yourself and shoot at a higher f-stop, say f8, so that you get everyone sharp. All right? following so far i'm on it following i'm on so it far. okay <laughs> so you're telling the camera i'm going to now shoot for the entire event i'm going to shoot everything at f5.6 all right i'm not going to change everything because that's going to be my safety aperture i know that i can shoot uh single shots and I can shoot groups and I'm going to get everyone sharp and it's also going to give me a bit of background blur so that my image doesn't have too much detail and I'm going to get rid of um, all Jan's dolls that she has in the background of the room. It can be a bit overwhelming or there might be clutter or guff in the background and you just want to clean it up. So you pick your aperture based on how you want your shot to look. You choose your shutter speed based on what's going on in the shot. So if you think you've got a lot of movement in your shot, then the safety will be to shoot around, say, 1 one twenty fifth or 1 60th of a second. If you're shooting um, 
say on a location like this where it's very dark, you may need to lower your shutter speed because you want to drag in more ambient light. So uh, where uh, the example where Karen was shooting, where she had like where the room was a bit darker and she wanted to pick up uh, more detail like those chandeliers and capture a lot of that, then you'd want to... Um, keep your shutter speed a bit lower. So if you're shooting inside mostly, then maybe have your shutter speed. Honestly, when I'm shooting inside and it's a dark event like this, I might have my shutter speed at say a, a 30th or a 60th of a second. And that works for me. All right. So I've told my camera that I'm going to shoot at a 30th or a 60th of a second. And by the way, you've set to manual mode to do this and I've got my aperture picked. And then I've got my ISO set to auto ISO. And I had some other examples of, um, all right, so uh, here's a, a Sony um, where you, you go into, you've got to, you've got to read your um, menu and find out, because I can't sit here and list all the different uh, cameras, but you basically want to set your ISO to auto. All right, now the other advantage of that, and I think I've got a Canon version. Uh, this is Nikon here. Uh, the other thing you can do with most cameras when you're working with auto ISO, so you turn your auto ISO on, is you can, t this is really good. You can tell, you can set the camera and tell it that, okay, I want you to use auto ISO, but I don't want you to be ridiculous in the ISOs that you give me because the concern is that the camera is just going to pick 357,000 as an ISO. I just made that figure up and, and you end up shooting the entire event at the highest ISO of your camera and you get these really grainy shots. So knowing that we talked about that the ideal range of an ISO is say between 400 and 1600 or 2000 ISO, you can tell your camera to never go over um, the figure that you know uh, works best for your camera and it's different for all cameras. Some cameras uh, shoot beautifully at high ISOs. Some cameras, uh, again, the uh, proverbial dogs, what's it's uh, show up, that's grain, huge uh, noise in your camera. So you want to avoid, say, I know my 1DX is no good under uh, over 1600 ISO. I know my 5D Mark IV is uh, fantastic at very high ISOs. So get to know your camera, do a test at all the high ISOs, and then in these parameters, you can enter in to never go over a certain ISO um, number. All right? Does that make sense? Are there any questions? Yeah, yeah so Janine... Um, slash Kerry and Rebecca were both asking whether you were doing um, that shot handheld um, back with that couple um, at dusk. Yes, because, yes, the camera will freeze the motion as well. So okay. you can, yeah. I, I'm not going to sit here and recommend that you do this for an event. I would just err on the side of safety and for the first few events that you do you've got to get to know your camera and and working with flash and you've got to get to know how confident you are in hand holding i, I can do that it'll work and i know that the flash is actually going to freeze the motion uh, i would recommend that you start with a 60th of a second if you're finding that everything is super sharp drop to a 30th and experiment with that. If you're finding that you're uh, still going well, then experiment on a 15th of a second. Cool. Karen is desperate to know how the hell do you do that handheld on one fifteenth? That's it. The flash freezes the motion. Yep. So, again, tonight, um, when you're sitting watching Game of Thrones... Get your camera out, put the flash on it, set it up to auto ISO and uh, photograph the dog, the cat, uh, one of the kids, anything and just experiment and see what happens in a room where you've just got the television on and maybe one lamp in the room. 
and have a play around with, set the auto ISO and say, okay, I'm going to shoot at F4 and I'm going to shoot at a, a 1 1 25th of a second. Take a shot and have a look what happens. Then drop your shutter speed and you'll find that the camera will adjust the ISO according to the shutter speed that you've set. It works beautifully. I've used this on high, high, high powered events uh, where I've had to go from inside to a, like a black hole of a room to outside in full sun. And I can't afford to even have that extra second where I'm going, hang on, I've got to change my ISO, Mr. Prime Minister or Mr. President. Uh, just wait there. Talk amongst yourselves while I fiddle with my camera. You can't. No. The shot's over. It's gone. So this way um, I can go from shooting inside, get the image, chase them outside in bright sunlight, and uh, I know that my camera is then going to, like inside it might might have been um, set at, 1600 or 2000 ISO the minute I go outside the camera is going to read the light and go oh she's outside now drop the ISO but it'll keep the the f-stop and the shutter speed the same hmm. so again experiment on a bright sunny day be inside and go shoot in the darkest room in the house it might be your walk-in closet okay and just get your styrofoam head or even a little um action figure and take a photo using this technique and then go straight outside into full sun and and use the same technique cool um both caroline and suzanne are asking you um if your flash was on manual or ttl ttl okay, okay. so let's ha have a look at that now so ttl uh the other thing you can do with ETTL is I find that the default settings, the, the speed light settings, most camera manufacturers want to give you a, an average setting and I think it, it tends to put out too much flash. So, um, and that's just because they, they, they just want to make sure that you get it right. So what I find is when I'm working in ETTL, which is basically you've got your camera set on your flash set on your camera and you're, you're setting, you're manually setting the f-stop and the shutter speed, the TTL, the flash is going to calculate exactly how much light you need to output to, to balance the daylight with the flash the ambient light with the flash. But I find that as a general rule at full power, it's going to be too much. So what you can do, and at first, just just go ETTL at full power and get the feel of it and um, make sure that you're getting your images sharp and you're getting them in the ballpark. When you get a little bit more confident, what you can start doing is working on uh, dialing back the... Uh, the power of the flash. So you, you've got this uh, little wheel here. This is how most speed lights are set up. And basically you can turn down the flash power. So you can tell it that what you're doing is great, but I want you to just be a third of a stop less power and experiment with that. And again, this is something that you can do while you're watching Game of Thrones. Just see what happens if I've got, okay, full power, it's too strong, it looks like that rabbit in the spotlight, it's overlit, it looks lit. A good shot should look like, it, it, it shouldn't look lit, you know? So you wanna uh, work with uh, toning down that ETTL. And I, th I find that dropping the power by a third, when you've got the Gary Fong diffuser or a small softbox on the flash, really helps a lot with that. Yeah, right. 